good morning all. If you're seeing this video, chances are you are someone I went to school with or someone I know from church. So, in a few cases I could be both, but needless to say, I've probably known you for quite a while. Now, probably one thing that you really don't know about me is why it is that I didn't go to church too much when I was younger. So, let's take that way back machine back to 1972 when I was a young seven-year-old kid living in Broadview, Illinois, a beautiful place. And I changed the family that day. Um, it was a Sunday, and that's the only thing I know about the particulars of that day. Uh, but we were in the kitchen, and just like any other kid, I was complaining about having to go to church. And I'm sure it was the same lame excuses that kids and actually many of us uh, still use to this day about not going to church. But after a while, Dad just said, okay, you make the decision whether we go or not. And I said, stay home. And we did for years. The fact that the, this innocuous little story still rocks me to this day should show the gravity of the story itself. Now, don't say anything about my parents, anything about me whatsoever, and the parameters of that day, I have no clue what was going on. I was seven. And I think we can all look back to the early 70s and realize those were not the best times for our culture or our choices. But that can be said about today as well. So today, I want to turn my attention to something which not many really talk about or even pay real close attention, and that is, why religion? I mean, the only place one gets to talk about things a little bit deeper is at a religious establishment or here in some sort of form of social media. Now, there's one thing the great majority of you, whether you go to church, synagogue, temple, etc., or if you, even if you don't, we all have one thing in common. Most of us know virtually nothing about religion or philosophy in general. M many of you will take it as a given that Sunday is church day or Saturday is Sabbath, Friday for, the, for Islam. But why do we do these things? What are we looking for? What are we trying to understand? Now, the great majority of you, we have gone through life and there has been a myriad of successes, a myriad of pains. We've had times of eating nothing but ramen noodles and now we can probably go out and get a steak whenever we want it. For some time, there has been so many things in our lives. There's some have been divorced, some remarried, some have had children, others no children for whatever reason. And we have dealt with all kinds of torments, the joys of life here on earth. Many of us have come close to death, maybe have died and come back. If you're still dead and watching this, by all means, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from that. But most of us have grown in not really knowing anything whatsoever about religion, philosophy, or its purpose. And even if we did, we were never shown how to apply it to our lives. Slowly, we drifted from whatever faith community we belonged to. I grew up in Hoffman Estates in the 70s and 80s. So at that time, most of us were either Catholic or Lutheran. Now, I know there are a number of Jewish and a number of Sikh, Buddhist, etc., but it was a fairly homogeneous area. I think that pretty much that could be said for most of the Chicago suburbs. I speak really only to my own culture, but I think it's safe to say that we really got shafted when it comes to learning about religion or philosophy. Our parents did the best they could, of course, but life was changing rapidly and they were not prepared to answer the questions that we had. Uh, we might assume they were taught better about these things, and but I'm pretty sure not as well as we might imagine or even have been led to believe. But our parents learned life and were able to make some connections. But as I look back at my life, 
we have to question who in their 20s are ever good at answering life's big questions. Now, now that we're in our grandparents' age, we might have a shot, but we were never taught much of this to begin with. Now, most of us went to public school. My family certainly could not afford a private school, and the education we were getting was as good as, at the time, perhaps better. Um, but none of the classes ever really pointed to philosophy or religion. The funny thing is, most of the teachers had gone to private schools in the city and interspersed religious ideas into their teaching. People were free enough back in those days to be able to do that without being eviscerated. Now, basically most everyone was taught everything. But we learned nothing about that except for the hour or so that we, once a week that we went going to church, if we went. And we can all agree none of those homilies or sermons did much for a teenager. Let's face it. I know what I was thinking about as a teenager, and it wasn't Jesus unless I needed help in the test. So this video series, I hope to help out a little bit on those matters. I mean, it's, life is huge. There are close to 7 billion people on this planet, and we're all in the same boat. We were born. We've, both, we've had various hurts, pains, been placed upon us by our family, our relationships, people we thought we knew stab us in the back. And then we have this wild perception that we're all perfect and the rest of the world is wrong. Of course, that newer generation doesn't respect us as we try to impart what we have learned. Oh yeah, and then we die. There is much more to this life, but we were never were invited to explore it. So, let's go back to the basics. Why am I here? Where am I going? Now, these sound like impossible questions. They're big. No question about it. Every philosopher from long before the Greeks and the Far Eastern thinkers that we know of, they were thinking these things. People long before them were. They moved from here into real life applications, though. We have to get that real life application. Depending on how badly you've been hurt though, through life, this exploration allows you the freedom to explore these questions. So maybe the best place to start, past, present, future hurts, successes, joys, because that makes up the individual. See, everything we've ever been taught talks about the group, the culture, etc. But it's the individual that really matters to us. Yes, we care about others. But how we think about ourselves really affect how we love anybody else, including our kids, etc. So let's begin there. Whether we want to admit it or not, one of our prime motivators is what is the purpose of my life. There are many ways of thinking about this. We can go down to just animalistic endeavors. Our purpose is to make the next generation and bring them to maturity. That's a valid purpose, and if we didn't have the ability to move to a higher ground at all, okay. I mean, dogs, cats, horses, elephants have been doing this for years. They've had life that they have a soul, life force, whatever you want to call it, but while they can do many things, I'm not sure that they can give, I can give them credit for an intellect like we have. See, they run on instinct, but they're not going to ponder any mysteries. They want to run, play, and procreate. At this level, we're not much different. I like procreation. And I think we can all agree that our minds are superior to that of an animal. It works completely differently. This is why we have so many worldviews and cultures. Our minds can adapt and flourish, and our mindsets can change. A dog, no matter where it's put in the earth, whether it's just going to run and play, sleep and procreate, whether it be in Antarctica or the Sahara Desert. This is what makes us different. We want to know more. 
we would not have easy access to all this information if we did not have the desire for knowledge. The desire for knowledge has that purpose and knowledge can lead us in that direction. And the ultimate end is simply truth. The reason that so many people think that there is no ultimate truth is they know nothing about philosophy or deeper religion. Of course, there is a truth. What we cannot really be sure of, of the various truths, and there really are quite a few of them, which one is right? That's our biggest issue here. There's no provable truth to be found simply because it's obvious. There's more than just here in this area of the land. There's much more than North America. There's much more than just the Earth, the Milky Way, the galaxy, the universe, the multiverse, whatever it is. Now this had led many to believe that there is a myriad of truths. This concept is insane. There is a truth. Science has found some truths, such as two and two is four. Our gravity on Earth is, you know, 9.80 meters per second squared. Mars, it's 3.72. Uh, you know, so there is the scientific truth. So therefore, there must be a metaphysical truth as well. We can call it metaphysical truth, religion, creed, doctrine, belief, and let's not be thrown by the word belief here. It's not a general term, but a specific term related to the specific beliefs of a certain view. We can look at the world and see that the grass is green, so therefore Ireland is the best place. No one ever looks to Greenland for this, though. Yeah, but maybe here is a good place to take a brief look at ourselves. This is a tough one because we have to ask, what is our name? And how does it affect how we go through life? You think this doesn't affect us? I can read off a list of names and you will have a picture in your mind of quite a few different things. Think about Charles. Eugene, Charlie, Zeus. Now each of us hearing these names have a specific image that comes up. And we all in effect prejudge what things each of these things can do and what things they're poor at. Now when we stop to get to know that person, we then change our minds of course, but right out of the box, Zeus sounds a whole lot more powerful than Eugene. So maybe here we can think about, well, what about our names? Follow that through. What, what does our, my name mean? What is it that I do? What is it that people ask of me? There's nothing too amazing here, trust me. We tend to think about these things already but it really is an exercise to help our minds open up to thinking about questions and all sorts of answers. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses, no question about that. The good news is the strengths far outcry our, out, uh, class our weaknesses. That allows us to go further than just look at the sky and sort of say, meh. But opening up our thoughts to the mind brings us to something that we are all seeking, that truth that is to be found. So that's what I'd like to explore during this next few se this series is take a look at life's big questions, how various ideas come to approach them, and what they all mean not going to be able to give you any deep answers. I'm not that smart. But by opening up the mind, being able to open up the concepts to think about these things, you'll be able to get closer, and that's really what our goal is here on life. So, anyway, 
I will see you next time. We'll talk a little bit more about definition of what um, religion is, spirituality, philosophy, etc. And that should get us started off in a nice place. So for right now, just think about your names. Think about who you are, what you're doing. And that should get us um, a good start on this series. So hope to see you again real soon. Thanks a lot.